Uh, um, well, I don't know. Um, hmm. Yeah, like I said, I'm just not familiar enough. Like, I know, you know, CGA, EGA, VG, I know, like, I know all that, but it's like, I'm not really too sure what defines each one. I just kind of know there's a certain visual style, but uh, they're all really close to me. And no problem. If you can't tell, um, yeah, nerds welcome. Nerds welcome here. Also, hey there. Uh, like it when people speak up. So, okay, everything's, uh, I'm just double checking, making sure everything's, uh, yeah, everything looks good. Hopefully everything's, uh, I, I, you know, normally I'd ask, does everything sound good, but there's no sound in the game. Well, there, there are a few blips and bloops, but I found that the blips and bloops are actually so ear-piercingly, screechingly, just terrible, I, I had to turn the game's audio off because that's all it is. Uh, there's no music, there's just screeching blips and bloops, so I felt like it would be better to just not, you know, torture people with that. Anyway, Might and Magic, Book 1, Secret of the Inner Sanctum. Here we are again. I've been playing this game a lot, um, so let's, let's jump right into it. Alright. Are you ready? And yes, I am. I am ready for some dungeon crawling. Well, it, yeah, the PC speaker. You know, that, that PC speaker sound? Like, ugh. So, okay. And also, you know what I love about this era of game? Is, okay, at the bottom of the screen, it's, a, you know, it's got the copyright date. And then it's just got a guy's name, John Van Kanigam. Like, it's just a guy's name, like just one guy, you know? So anyway, let's go to town. I've already, so I've already, like, I've got a party. They're all about level three and four. Like, everyone in my party is level three or four right now. And uh, I've been playing this game, like, uh, a few times. I've been at this for a while. Uh, and I still haven't, so like, I think I've played this game like maybe like 20, uh, over 20 hours, right? I've been playing this thing for over 20 hours on stream, and we're not out of the first town yet. Like I've made a few daring expeditions beyond the first town, and I got my ass beat. Like every time I try to go outside the town, I get my ass fucking beat. Uh, like any time I try to, to go to the arena in the cavern underneath Sorpagal, I get my ass beat, so it's a rough game. It's a really rough game, and it requires a lot of grinding. So let me just get the party all set up. So Lord Double is the paladin, and Mike the knight is a knight. Uh, and then in the second row, I'm going to put the, uh, the cleric, which is Burn, and then Lambda of Delta, which is our mage. Then in the last row, I put the robber and the archer. And you know, I like that in this game, I've never heard of a thief or a rogue. I've never heard of them referred to as just a robber. Uh, I've never heard that before, but in this game, that's, yeah, it's a robber. All right, we're ready to go. It was a wonderful era. It really was. It was a, a great era for the video games. So here we go. You can see my party. Um, my food is a little bit low, so I might want to buy some fresh food. But if you look at everyone's uh, stats, yeah, like they're all level 3 or 4. Yeah, everyone is either level 3 or level 4. And uh, their age, like they're all... They're all between age 20 and 21. The, the age jumps up every time you level. And I really like this, so if characters get really old, like if your character is like 80 years old, there's a chance they could die every time they, they rest. It's great. So what I've been doing is I've been equipping everyone. I've been getting them leveled up. I've been getting them equipment. Um, right now, the fighters have pretty much the best possible gear that we can have. And I've got a few junk items to sell. 
But, uh, so yeah, I need to get the cleric. The cleric and, uh, okay, the robber is fine. But the cleric and the archer and, uh, I think that's just it. The cleric and the archer. They need better armor. So that's what I'm working on now. And I've got some things to sell. So I'm just gonna... <clears throat> a man wearing a leather apron speaks. Distinguished travelers, you've come to the right place. Can I help you? Yes. So I'm just gonna sell some things. I'm. G Ooh, look at that. That bag of garbage, it's worth 50. Yeah, sure, I'll sell a bag of garbage for 50. Um, smelling salts. I, I don't know what smelling salts do. Hmm. Maybe it wakes people up? Maybe? I don't know. I guess it can't hurt to have that. And then you have the rope and hook. Um, I'm just gonna hold on to that. I don't know what they do, so I feel like it would be a good idea to hold on to it. Uh, I, you know, like, here's the thing, here's, here's my thoughts on it, um, so yeah, I don't really know anything, like, I, this is really the first Might and Magic game I've ever played, and I only, pl like, I only started playing it very recently. I have no nostalgia for this whole thing, um, but I did play Wizardry. I played Wizardry 8, and I really liked that. I thought, like, man, Wizardry 8, that, that game has a lot of problems. Um, so I thought, hey, let's go back and look at some of the more classic, you know, the more classic uh, games like this. And I was hooked. Like, I, I just, I loved it. And I got into it. The game, I think I played this game for about five hours before I even knew how to do anything. Because when you start the game, okay, when you start the game, your, your party has, they only have ten units of food. They, um... They have no equipment, so like, no weapons, no armor, which is terrible for the fighters. Uh, you have no money. So basically, you have to run into the dungeons naked and hope to not die. And I just, I kept dying over and over and over. I didn't know what I was doing wrong or how to not die. And it took a lot of, a lot of failed attempts to even figure out how to, you know, survive. And I still struggle with surviving, because there's, the way this game works, there's, the encounters can get very rough. Um, you can be down in a dungeon, and you can basically, you can be doing just fine, like you can be getting kills, getting loot, and then all of a sudden, you'll encounter an enemy that does obscene amounts of damage, that just rips through your party and kills you all in like five seconds. Oh, here we go. We've just encountered slither beasts. So yeah, we're still in town. Um, it, like if you think we're in a dungeon, no, we're we're in town right now. So let me just go ahead and attack. All right, we've got the initiative. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have lambda, and I have my. So here's the thing. Uh, when you want to cast a spell in this game, uh, how that works is basically you um, you put in a number and a level. So like. Sleep. Uh, I'm looking at my spell book. I've got it. And again, none of this is in the game. It's all in the manuals and the clue book, and you have to write your own notes for everything. So in my notes here, I've got that uh, sorcerer spells. Um, one and uh, let's see. Let me scroll down. One and eight. So level one, number eight. That is the sleep spell, and I'm going to cast it on A. All right, and it hits five targets. It hits five targets going down. Oh yeah, man. See, this is the great thing about this game. Um, like, you don't even know where you are. Um, so like, the only way I know where I'm going is I have the clue book open, and the clue book, it has like, it's got very basic maps of, uh, of all the areas in the game, but they're not detailed. There's no details, there's no information, it's just like, it looks like a crossword puzzle. I mean, if I might, uh, just give me a second here, and I'll pop the clue book open, and I'll show you where we are right now. So, okay, right now, we're here. We're in the town of Sorpagal. That's your map. 
All right, like that that's your map right there. So yeah, uh, this game, it requires a lot of imagination and a lot of patience. I mean, a whole lot of patience. So let's have Meryl shoot Slither Beast B. All right, they got a kill. That's nice. Yeah, that's that's kind of the thing. Um, like pretty much the whole plot of the game, even it's 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 all in the books. Um, you don't really get hardly anything in the game, and that's unfortunate. But I understand it. Like I I understand why that is. So let's have the pal uh the cleric. Let's have the cleric cast a pain spell on Slither Beast D. All right, took him down. And now let's just have the fighters, let's have them go nuts. Alright, Albert, shoot! And he missed. Man, the, uh... The character, they miss so much. They, they, they miss constantly. Oh, another miss. Another miss. There we go. 104 experience for everyone. Yeah, I, that's, again... That's on my list of things to do. Things to do. But um, so here's the thing. Let's uh, let's go down into the into the dungeon. Uh, hold on. Before I go into the dungeon, let me just bring up my map of the dungeon. Okay, here we go. I got my map. So the dungeon stairs going down. Take them. Yes, I will. Welcome to the darkness. Welcome to the darkness. So, if we want to not, you know, stumble around in confusion, we need to, uh, yeah, we need to go to the, to the mage, and we're going to have the mage cast one and six, which is a light spell. There you go. And now you can see, for a while. And I know where I am. I, I'm looking at my map of the dungeon now. So, now that we're down in the dungeon, um, here's the thing about the dungeons in this game, okay? Th a couple of things. A couple of things. One, there are traps everywhere. Alright? Like, all the doors, all the treasure chests. Um, there's like, you know, you'll run into pitfalls where you don't even see it, but you'll just suddenly fall through the floor and into a puddle of acid and die. Um, there, there's traps everywhere, and uh, it's really easy to get fucked. Um, likewise with the monsters. The monsters, you never know. And hey, Aiko. Man, everyone, um, everyone is just starting to show up. Like, I've, I've played two other games. I, um, like, before this, I was playing, well, I started with Dreamfall. I, I started with that. And um, nobody really seemed to, to like that too much, but I like adventure games, so I had fun with it. And then uh, then I switched over to the D and D Stronghold Kingdom Simulator, and uh, I finally know how to do things with that now. But again, people didn't seem to like that too much. So here we are, Might and Magic. Anyway, I'm gonna go to the north. All right, there's a few places I haven't really checked out yet. Oh, locked, uh, locked door. So let's go ahead and unlock with Albert. Lightning bolt, electric current, singe the party. So yeah, um, even when you have a robber and you have him, you know, try to unlock the door, guess what? There's still a chance he could fail, which means you get hit by a trap. So it looks like the lightning bolt it didn't do very much damage, but it did do a little bit of damage. Uh, yeah, I'll check it out again. Like, I will, um, I mean, if you want, you can look back on the stream, you know, in the archives. But, um, yeah, I'll definitely be playing D&D Kingdom Simulator again. And see, now that I actually know how to play the game, uh, I can, I can do things much easier with it. So I, I'll probably start over, um, maybe tomorrow. I didn't really get a whole lot accomplished today, <laughs> even though I played it for two and a half hours. But uh, yeah, the um, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, so like, the thing about D and D Kingdom Simulator is that like 
you know, you build, you basically, you're building forts and castles, and you're building villages and all that, and farms, and, and, uh, but it's kind of neat in that each leader of a stronghold, like, they're a mage, they're a, a fighter, they're a cleric, and then all of their villagers are also fighters or clerics or mages. And you kind of combine them together and you, you send your forces out to attack enemy strongholds and, um, and monsters. Like, uh, I took down a stronghold full of uh, hobgoblins and the, they, all, the, like all the, the mages and everything, they got into fights, they were casting charm spells and web spells and the fighters were you know, doing their thing. It, it looked really cool, um, but it's just, it's really complicated. I mean, really complicated. <laughs> okay, let's go in the door. I don't see anything in here. Okay, let's go down here, and uh, let's try opening this door. There's nothing. Now, let's see if I can go through the... No, it's solid. So here's something about the dungeons in this game. Alright. So, in this game, other than the traps, there's a lot of invisible walls. As in, you'll move towards a wall, and then you'll just go straight through it. And it's not always a two-way street, as in sometimes you will walk through a wall and find yourself in a whole new section that you don't know where you are, and then you turn around and try to go out, you can't do it. So you gotta be careful. Darkness. Let's turn around. That's interesting. Um, let's have Lambda cast a light spell. So one and uh, one and six. So okay, the thing about this room right here, every time I go into this room, my light source dies, and I don't know why. But there is something in there, and I'm gonna try to get it. So let's uh, well I mean I don't know that there's something in there, but there's a there's a whole hallway in a room. So let's take a look, shall we? So I'm gonna go in darkness. See, look at that, just darkness. So I'm going to take one step forward, then I'm going to turn left, then I'm going to go forward a bunch of steps. I hit a solid wall. Okay. Can I turn the lights on now? So one and, uh... Let's see, be one and six. It doesn't work. Search the area. Nothing. So, okay, now I'm going to turn left turn left again then go forward till I hit a wall then I'm gonna turn right go forward go forward again oh god killer bees and flesh eaters um killer bees are incredibly they are insanely rough like killer bees will take you out so here's the thing um man like, oh, first off, I know what you're gonna say, like, how the fuck do I know where I'm going? Well, I have a, you know, I have a vague outline of where I'm supposed to be going. Um, like, in my clue book. So, since I can't see where I'm going, I'm literally just like, I'm counting everything I do. So I'm like, okay, two steps, forward, turn, four steps forward, turn, turn, four steps forward, turn, you know, that, that's how I'm doing it. I'm basically, in my head, just kind of keeping track of it. Anyway. Time to get killed by a bunch of killer bees. Let's do it. Alright, the monster- Oh, god damn. They start- So yeah, the killer bees, they hit 10 times each for 13 points of damage. So basically, um, they can kill you in one hit. Basically. So let's have Meryl try to shoot the killer bees. Um, flesh eaters get their turn. Let's have, let's have Burn cast a, uh, yeah, let's cast a heal spell on Lambda. Alright, Lord Double Attacks. I'm gonna try to kill as many of the bees as I can. I, um, and the bees, they hit hard. They hit really hard. Let's have Mike the Knight attack. Six points, but not a kill. Um, Lambda is our mage, so let's cast Electric Arrow. One B has gone down, so uh, we have a chance now. Let's take a look at our health. Uh, the Paladin is almost dead. It's not good. Uh, let's have Meryl shoot. 11 points of damage. The Killer Bees get their turn. Uh, they hit for like 12 points. Very rough. 
Let's have Burn cast a healing spell on uh, on Mike. No, on Lord Double. Got to keep that Paladin up. All right, and Lord Double attacks and misses. Attack and miss. All right, Killer B is down. We have one more Killer B to go. They do so much damage. Let's have Lambda cast another Electric Arrow. And Meryl shoots, misses. Um, let's cast a Heal spell on Mike. Trying to keep him in the fight. Man, everyone is just missing all the time. Oh, the killer bees. Oh, those killer bees. Um, electric arrow. So yeah, okay, all the killer bees are down. So here's the thing about killer bees and plagues of locusts, things like that. So, because they are a swarm, they are incredibly hard to hit. I mean, like, you, you can barely hit them at all. And because they're a swarm, they hit like 10 times each, right? Because, you know, they're a swarm. So you have an enemy that is very difficult to hit, and every time they hit, they're like doing enough damage to kill one party member. And they attack in swarms as well. So like you'll encounter groups of like five killer bees, and they take their turn and you're just dead. Like you are just dead, you don't even have time you don't have the ability to react. They just kill you. And that's how that goes down normally. Um, I was quite lucky to not get killed this time around. Uh, let's cast a light healing spell on Lord Double. Also, if you don't know, like, you don't have to memorize all of the spell commands in this game. You really don't. You really don't have to memorize them all. I keep notes, but it really does help to memorize like basic spells. Uh, what I mean is, I mean like uh, for the mage, you want to have your fire arrow, your electric arrow. You want to have those spells uh, in your head. And uh, for the cleric, you want to have your healing spells. You want to have them uh, memorized by heart. But like all the other spells, no, I, I keep a, a little notebook with those. Let's take a look at the health. Health is good. How much magic? Okay, we got enough magic, so I'm gonna have Burn cast a Pain spell. Alright. And only one Flesh Eater left. Okay. 175 points of experience for everyone. Let's check. There is no loot. I know, we went through all of that for nothing. Well, not for nothing. We got some some points. But uh, let's go ahead and have Lambda cast a light spell. Alright, and we are exactly where I thought I would be. So uh, let's rest. Uh, let's rest here. No encounters, that's good. Uh, yeah, you can totally get jumped by, uh, by monsters in your sleep. And if that happens, then you have to start the fight with like half of your party asleep. That's not a good place to be. It's a really not good place to be. So I have to recast all my spells now. So here's the thing. Um, to anyone that doesn't know, you know, anyone new coming, um, the thing about combat in this game, the thing about it, is that... Okay, um, you might notice sometimes that monsters, they take a lot of hits to kill and then other times they take only one hit. You know, the same type of monster. And you might be wondering, well, why is that? Well, much like uh, a lot of D&D or many tabletops, um, the enemies, their health, pool, uh, their health pool is determined by a dice roll. So you might encounter a, a really tough enemy that only has two hit points, or that has like 50 hit points. You don't know. It could go either way. Now, yeah, here's the thing. Here's where it gets interesting, Morning. Here's where it gets interesting. 
So not only is their health randomly determined, and of course, you know, damage is random, but their resistances are also random. And what I mean is, like, let's say, you know, you encounter an enemy and you cast a fire spell on it. It works just fine. Well, then there's another enemy and it's the exact same kind of enemy. You cast a fire spell on it and it says this monster is not affected. So yes, uh, monsters can just randomly be immune to certain types of magic, or to magic in general. Like, they can just be immune to things at random. Complete random. It's amazing, I love it. So yeah, this game is, it's fucking rough, and I love it. Oh hey look, um, scrawled on the wall, a message reads, Don't. Turn. Around. Well. I think I'll just turn around then. Oh, hey! A group of five fire ants just, uh, jumps out. <laughs> oh, man. No, like, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, Morning. Um, so look, this game is rough, alright? Um, and you want another example of how this game can be rough? So, like, I walked into one dungeon, and, um, it was just a normal dungeon. I opened a door, right? So I opened the door, and I went through it. And it says, surprise, uh, you you encounter a slide. And I'm like, well, what does that mean? And then all of a sudden, uh, like, I just get propelled forward by like 10 squares. And then uh, and then when it finally stops, it says, um, you know, you have, you have landed in a puddle of acid. You and your entire party have been dissolved into bones and it's game over. <laughs> so yeah, this game is rough, okay? But I like it. I, I actually really like it. So let's, uh, let's have, uh, now fire ants. Fire ants are not affected by fire. That's how that works, okay? Uh, fire ants are, in general are immune to fire. Although sometimes not. Sometimes you can hit them with fire. Sometimes, sometimes not. So I'm gonna cast electric arrow. Only two points. So I don't know, maybe they're randomly immune to lightning as well. Who knows? Uh, let's have Meryl shoot and miss. I'm gonna have burn, cast a blessing on everyone, and let's start attacking. So the blessing, that increases the accuracy of everyone. Good times. Okay, fire ants are getting their turn. Not too bad. Uh, not much damage there. Yeah, that, that wasn't bad at all. And, uh, you know, I here's the thing, um, if there's one thing that I, so, like, if there's one thing that I really don't like about this game, and, you know, it's like, I don't like it, but at the same time, I completely understand it from a game mechanic perspective, uh, there is no saving the game. The only way to save your progress is to go back to the inn. So you have to go back to an inn and rest in order to save. And, um, well, it's not so bad right now because we're just, you know, in the dungeon under town. But imagine if we were, like, you know, out in the wilderness in a dungeon, like, five floors deep in a dungeon. And imagine if, you know, like, we had to turn around and go back. Imagine, like, trying to survive getting back. Or imagine that you're, like, five hours out in the wilderness and all of a sudden you encounter some really tough monster or a trap that just kills you instantly and you lose all that progress. I mean, I think I, I, I think I just might cry, but at the same time, I understand it and it really adds to the risk factor. It, it really, like, it makes you on edge. You know, like, like no, none of that, like, uh, you know, Dark Souls, no, I don't, I don't care if I get rolled over by a boulder or something, no. Uh, that, that's no problem. But imagine losing, like, five hours of progress in this game, or something like that. Like, that would be literal weeping, and, uh, that's the real Dark Souls there, like, that's the real, like, that's difficulty. So, let's, let's finish this fight up here. Alright, one fire ant down. Let's have Meryl shoot, 13 points of damage. And let's have Burn do a pain spell. Alright. Okay, see, we're actually, uh, the party's much better at killing things now. I find that when it comes to combat, the best way to do it 
is to sort of, um... I, I don't know, like, I feel that, like, playing super defensive, there are moments where you want to do that, but for the most part, you want to just get in there and attack. You, you just want to kill the enemies as quickly as possible, because the longer they're in the field, the longer they have a chance to kill you. Oh, man, one point of damage. That was just sad. So, okay, this fire ant. I've put well over 10 points of damage into it, and it's not dying, so, yeah. This fire ant has, it just randomly has more health. Alright, it's finally down. Let's have Lambda cast Electric Arrow. Five points, and Meryl shoots and misses. Burn, cast, uh, yeah, go ahead and cast that, uh, Pain spell. Alright, 83 points for everyone. So, how about that loot? You found a wooden chest. So here we go. And this is where things get tricky. So, I know that you see that treasure chest and you're like, Mmm, that's a, that's a big, juicy, tempting looking treasure chest right there. You just want just wanna to crack that thing open. But here's the deal. Um, there's almost always a trap. Okay? And the traps in this game, they can do permanent damage. Alright? Well, semi-permanent damage. Like, damage you have to go to a, to a proper healer in a temple to get fixed. So, um, let's be careful. So, first things first, detect magic. So, I'm gonna have our, I'm gonna have our mage detect. Alright, so there's magic, yes. There's trap, no. Okay, that doesn't really tell me a whole lot. Um, so it's magic, but not... Oh, hold on. That could mean that there's some kind of enchantment on it, in which case sending the mage first might be. This is tricky, but I'm going to have Albert open it. He's our trap opener. So I'm going to have him... Uh, yeah, I'm going to have him detect remove traps. Alright, let's get in there. Okay, each share is worth four gold, and we found a short sword. Excellent. Uh, well, I think... I think when it comes to not detecting traps or magic, um, like the only reason not to do it is if you don't have the magic, because it actually costs points to do a detect. Like, um, yeah, the detect magic spell, it's actually a spell. It costs magic points to cast. So if you don't have the magic points to cast it, or if you're like really low on magic and you don't want to spare any, then I guess that's why you wouldn't do it. And it's the same for like, for not using the robber to open up the trap, it's like, maybe if he's dead, or something like that, you wouldn't uh, have the opportunity. Yeah, that's, see that's another thing, there's, like there's a whole other type of spell, and it requires gems, like there's, um, so yeah, the gems that you find, uh, those are like a finite casting resource, and um, spells that you cast with gems, they're really good, they're really powerful spells, but man, uh, finding gems is a problem. Hey, let's, uh... Hmm. I think everyone's doing pretty good, but I rest after every fight. So yeah, I just rested, so now I have to have Lambda cast all of our spells over again. There we go. And the spells that I'm casting are Light and Leather Skin. So, Leather Skin, you know, that has a, uh, yeah, le Leather Skin is fun, it's, it gives you a little bit of armor protection, which doesn't mean resistance, that means, uh, yeah, that, it just means that you're a little harder to hit. So let's see, let's go back here. <clears throat> yeah, so every time you, um, oh man, speedrun, I don't think, I don't think it's possible to speedrun Might and Magic. And the reason I say that is because of the random factor. Like, it's so... I mean, it's it's so easy to randomly get attacked by some monster that just kills you instantly. It's so easy to randomly uh, fall into a trap that just kills you instantly. There, there's so many instant death traps in this game. Um, I, I couldn't even imagine, even if I... Like, even if I knew the game, like, like the back of my hand. I couldn't imagine speedrunning it. Oh, hey. 
It's another, uh, it's another message that says don't turn around. I love that. Um, you know, that's something I, so I very frequently, I compare this to like a, you know, an, uh, like an early tabletop game. And, like, that's something I'd do. Like, uh, you know, as the resident dick DM, that's something I'd do. I'd put like a, you know, in the dungeon, I, I'd say that the player finds like a, you know, scrawled on the wall, it says don't turn around. That's something I'd do. And then you turn around and, uh... Oh, hey! It's, um... So, it's a hag, five orcs, and two minor demons. <laughs> so, okay. I I've never encountered a hag before. Like, I've never encountered this before. Uh, I've encountered orcs. I've killed orcs before. They're not a problem. Minor demons. Um, so I've encountered minor demons before, and they pretty much murdered my party. But that was like a whole group of them. I don't know. Let's do it, right? Uh, the thing is, we're in the corner. Like, there's, there's literally nowhere to run. Like, there's nowhere to run. So let's, let's attack. Okay. So fortunately, we've got the initiative. We uh, we rolled for initiative. Um, only two of the enemy monsters are in the front row. The rest are in the back row. So we don't have to worry about all the other ones. Oh, also, what I so what I love about Might and Magic, I love that you can be attacked by very large groups of of monsters. Like, like okay, it wasn't in this one, but in the second Might and Magic game. I, like, I, I played the second one just for a little while, just to kind of demo it. And so, like, in the second Might and Magic game, which is a lot like this, um, I went outside of town, and I instantly got attacked by a group of 400 monsters. 400! And it pretty much went like this. So, they rolled initiative, they took their turn first, and they went down the list gang-banging my party until we died. I didn't even get to do anything. So yeah, that's how Might and Magic rolls. So let's, um... First things first. Yeah, first things first. Let's cast a sleep spell, alright? So let's try to put these things to sleep. Yeah, I did. I literally encountered an army, and, um... I, I don't really know what you're supposed to do in that situation, like, I don't know, I don't even know how you, how are you supposed to deal 400 enemies all getting to, like, and the thing is, is that they all get to take their turn individually. Now, of course, they don't all get to attack at once, but like, you know, you, you take on like 20 of them at a time, but they still go down that list, and goddamn, I don't even know how to deal with that. Okay, so we've put the hag to sleep, and we've put some orcs to sleep. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have our archer. I'm gonna have them go for the minor demon. Like the minor demons are the greatest threat here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast a blessing. Okay, the orc shoots and misses. All right. So they have weapon. They have uh, they have ranged weapons. Now. Okay, uh, for those that don't know, the way combat in this game works, so you see the plus signs, right? You can see the plus signs on A and B, and then over on the left you can see the plus next to 1 and 2. So yeah, the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's our party. That's our party and how we're standing. And um, so the plus, that means you're in the front row, it means you can attack with melee weapons. If you don't have a plus, that means you're in the back and you cannot attack with melee. So, uh, basically you put the mages and casters in the back, um, but yeah, it's the same for the monsters. The monsters, only the first two, A, B, they can attack with melee. The other ones, they have to use either spells or ranged weapons, and since it seems like the minor demons don't have any of that, they're basically useless in the back. So if I can kill them now, before they have a chance to fight back, that's what I want to do. Let's go ahead and fight the orc. Alright, one orc down. Let's have Albert shoot the orc. No, no, shoot the, the minor demon. There we go. Mike the knight, attack the orc. Gotta kill. Oh, oh god, the minor demons went first. 
So the minor demons, they just exchanged places with the sleeping orcs, and they got to they got to attack first. And they hit hard. Like 13 points hard. Which, like, 13 points is enough to kill some of these characters. So let's attack, er, well, Lambda. Let's cast a sleep spell. I'm just seeing if I can maybe put them back to sleep. So the hag is asleep. Uh, the orc is... Okay. Let's, um... And you know what I just noticed? So the minor demon, it's not wounded anymore. It recovered its health. That's bad. That's really bad. Uh, let's shoot. Miss. Burn. Cast a pain spell? Wait, hold on. We need healing. Gotta make sure we stay healed. But it looks like everyone's good for now. So I'm gonna cast that pain spell with burn. One point of damage to the lesser de the minor demon. This is not good. These demons seem to they seem to have a lot of hit points, and they're very hard. Oh god, 20 points of damage. They just they just took Lambda down in one hit. Uh, is she dead? No, she's not. She's not dead, she's just unconscious for now. So let's cast a, a good heal spell on Lambda. And let's keep fighting. Just keep fighting. Like, look at this. We're, we're pumping damage into these demons, and they're not going down. Finally, we killed one of them. Alright, so we killed one of those demons. So uh, let's keep up the assault. Electric arrow. And let's have Meryl shoot. Eight points. Um... Okay, the... Yeah, let's cast a light healing spell on the Paladin. Attack. Missed. Albert, you missed. Alright, the demons are down, but the Hag is up. I don't know what the Hag does. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure there are boss encounters. Like, um... So here's the thing, there's a lot of, um... So there's these statues that have riddles. And the riddles pertain to, like, um, like uh, powerful enemies that you'll encounter. And uh, so there's, there are definitely bosses in the game. But we, oh god, we we are not anywhere near ready to go up against something like, you know, no, oh god, no. Like, I'm still getting my ass beat by bugs. Okay, let's cast, um, you know, you know what? Let's cast a sleep spell. There we go. Look at that. So I put all of them to sleep except for one. And I'm gonna have the archers and the, the mages. I'm gonna have them try to kill the one that's not asleep. There we go. So good, we have the upper hand now. Alright, we went from we went from an almost unwinnable encounter to we've got the upper hand. So they're all asleep. Uh, let's go for the Let's go for the orcs first, actually. The orcs, they seem like they'd be easier to take down. So I'm gonna fight B. Shoot B. Man, everyone is missing. I don't know how you miss people that are asleep. Okay, that one goes down. Let's have Lambda cast. I'm gonna start taking the hag down now. Oh man, yeah, the the sleep spells, like, I, I would have lost the game so many times if it weren't for those sleep spells. So, yeah. Okay, the hag took seven points of damage, and they went down. The hag was nothing. All right. We got 145 points of experience. So, let's search the area. You found a wooden box. Okay. So, let's go ahead. Yeah, except for, that's the thing, I like, um, like, I'm a really big fan of crowd control spells, like, I, I mean, I don't, here's the thing, generally I play games more offensively than defensively, but if I have the option to, like, just completely neutralize an entire group of enemies, I will take it, okay, if I have the option. But like I said, I tend to play offensively rather than defensively. So let's uh, detect magic with Lambda. So it is magic and it is trapped. Alright. 
So magic and trapped. So let's go ahead and let's have Albert the robber. Let's have him try to to uh, disarm the trap. Ooh, blades, razor sharp blades, slice through the party. But you got 18 gold each and 15 gems. And everyone is dead or poisoned. Everyone is poisoned, not dead. This is a problem. So, okay, here's the deal with poison, okay? Here's the deal with poison. Um, so the deal with poison is that party members that are poisoned, it's not like poison in other games. Alright, here's how poison works in Might and Magic. So it never goes away, alright? It's, uh, as a matter of fact, here's how it works. So, as you move, as you rest, as you do things, your total hit points go down. Alright, not your, like, not your current hit points, your total hit points. So, if you let the poison, if you let the poison continue, everyone in your party will eventually have a maximum health of one. Which, of course, means that if they get sneezed on, they die. That's what poison means. Good fucking luck. Uh, we need to get out of here. Okay, like, we've been poisoned. We need to get out. Like, now. Uh, so let's see, I need to figure out how to get out of here. I, okay, here we go. Stairs going up. Let's take them. Alright, we're back in Sorbigal now. And I'm going to... Uh... Let's go to the food place first, because we need food. So I'm going to buy food for everyone. Alright, that costs 30 gold in total. And I am going to... Um, let's see, turn around. So, okay, our, our big problem here is we're all poisoned, so we're going to go over to the temple. The only place you can get poison fixed is the temple. Uh, until your cleric is capable of casting a cure poison spell. So here we are, we're in the temple, and everyone is poisoned except for Albert, so let's go ahead and let's, um, yeah, restore health, that's what you have to do. So, starting with Lord Double, let's restore health. Oh, and also, I know you see that, uncursed items, oh yeah, there's cursed items, there's totally cursed items. Alright, Mike the Knight, let's gather up our gold. We have 322 gold, but that's going to go away pretty quick. So I'm going to restore health again. And again, gather gold. Restore health. Gather gold. Restore health. Uh, Albert is not poisoned. Gather gold. Restore health. There we go. So everyone's health is in good shape now. But yeah, I just want to... I just want to remind you that if I hadn't... Like, if I hadn't cured the poison, eventually everyone in the party would have had one health, permanently. Like, uh, until you get it fixed, your maximum health goes down. And that is like... I, I have to be honest, I've never seen poison handled that way in a, in a game. Never. I, I've never seen that. Um, like, usually what poison means is that you, like, you take damage over time, but it's it's curable, you know. Like you can cast a heal spell and it'll it'll get you back up, but you'll just keep taking damage. I've never seen it function like this ever. Like not in a video game, not in a tabletop game, never. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and rest. No encounters. That's nice. Okay, so let's go back down into the dungeon. How much gold do I have, actually? Yeah, and that's, like, I've seen, I've seen poison. I've seen it, like, uh, you know, temporarily damage your stats or something like that. Uh, like, that's, um, that's actually how it works in World of Darkness as well. Like, in World of Darkness, you get, like, poisoned or something like that. It just damages a stat or a skill, or, you know. It, it's not, like, I don't know, I've never seen damage, I've never seen poison damage handled like this. Okay, so I'm just looking over, we have 222 gold, which is enough 
to buy something. So I want to buy some good armor. So I'm going to go to Burn the Witch, which is our cleric, and I'm going to buy armor. So I'm going to buy a suit of chain mail. There we go. All right, so let's um you know, let's go to that character and let's remove the scale mail. So scale mail is not all that great. So they have 3 AC right now. So we remove the armor and we equip the chain mail. All right, and uh, there we go, 5 AC. And yeah, I, I know, well, it's it's that, but it's also, it's a stream character, like there's, uh, it, you'll meet Burn eventually, but, um, but yes, it is also, you know, Burn the, yes, yes, it is also that. All right, let's save again. Look, I save compulsively in this game, in a game like this, where you can get wrecked at any moment and you could lose all your progress. I, I save, like, I hit that in compulsively. Now, uh, let's go back down into the dungeon. I could also go outside, so the exit of town is right here. But you know what I want to do? Actually, I want to show you something. I, I have such sights to show you. So, um, I'm going to show you two things. First off, uh, let's see, I'm going to go to, uh, yeah, let's go over here. And there's, so I know you don't see anything, but if you walk forward, there is a statue here. Search it. Yes. All right. So in honor of Korak for his mapping expedition of the land of Varn and rediscovery of the lost town of Dusk. Now that's not a clue. That's just like, oh, hey, information. But a lot of these statues, they're like, you know, th they're information their uh, their uh, riddles to to solve. Oh, hey, look! There's another statue. I'll go ahead and search it. Oh, here we go. It's a, it's a riddle. <clears throat> here we go. <clears throat> Services rendered, secrets unfold. The brothers together lead to treasures untold. Five towns you must travel for this quest to unravel. So. Yeah, what does that mean? It means something, but it's for later. How about over here? Okay, in honor of Gala, uh, for her brave attempt to work with the savages of the Volcanic Isles. Alright, that's just information. Uh, how about this one? Hmm. This beast once roamed the Enchanted Forest, and now rules a great fortress there. I... I don't know. So, so a beast once roamed the forest and now owns a great fortress. Hmm. Again, what does it mean? I don't know. Uh, let's keep looking around. So, I think we're over... Okay, I know where I am. I'm just uh, kind of wandering. So here's... Oh yeah, here's the training. Um, I don't think anyone is very close to leveling up. So here's how leveling up works, alright? So... Okay, first off, you need experience points, so you get EXP, and then, hey, you're ready to level up. How do you level up? You go to the trainer, and the trainer, he he charges you gold. So, in order to level up in this game, it is not just a matter of leveling, it's not just a matter of getting EXP, you also have to go to the trainer, and then pay a certain amount of gold, which increases as you get higher level. So yeah, like, the higher level you get, the more gold it costs to actually level up. The game makes you work for it, in other words. So, uh, yeah. Let's go over here, and you've got a locked door. So I'm going to have the... I'm gonna have the robber. Gonna have him unlock the door. Ooh, arrows! A sudden onslaught of poisonous arrows permeate the party. Um, it did a little bit of damage. It's not too bad. All right, let's go inside. And remember, we're in town right now. Oh, hey, look, uh, sprites. Oh, they're my favorite enemy. They are. So uh, let's let's attack. 
Okay, the sprites, they got, they rolled initiative, and the, the first thing they did is cast curse spells. And curse spells, they stack. So, okay, right now, my entire party is cursed four times over. And uh, they can keep stacking it, so... Okay. I know what you're thinking. What, is, what does that mean? What does being cursed mean? Well, here's what it means. It means that for every like for every point of curse you get you get that much negative to your attack roll as in if you're cursed negative four that means you have a negative four penalty on all attack rolls so yeah basically we're barely going to be able to hit them right now and if they curse us anymore we aren't going to be able to hit at all so yeah um sprites they're really good at ending your game um, and basically, if you get, like, I've, I think the most I've been cursed is, like, 15. Like, I've had a negative 15 to all attack rolls, which, at that point, you might as well just, um, you, you might as well just fast forward and die, because you have no means of defending yourself. So, let's go ahead, and first things first, let's have, uh, yeah, let's have the mage... Yeah, the, the mages are going to be the MVP here, okay? The mages are going to be the ones that can actually get a kill. Yeah, see, Meryl missed. Let's have Burn cast... Well, I'm going to have Burn cast a Blessing, which kind of sort of counteracts the, uh, the penalty. Yeah, see, there we go. See, the Blessing... The Blessing gives you, like, one plus one to your attack rolls. So it's, I don't know, Blessing is, it kind of counteracts Curse, but not really, because Curse stacks, Blessing does not. Yeah, everyone is missing more than usual, and they're casting Curse again. So let's have Lambda cast Electric Arrow. Oh, look, the sprite is not affected. Yeah, hey, how about those random, uh, how about those random resistances, right? Okay, let's uh, shoot. Okay, we actually managed to get a hit. How's our penalty? A negative five to all attacks. Good times. Let's cast a pain spell. They're not affected, so that sprite is immune to magic, it would seem. So the only hope is to hit it before it curses us so hard that we can't do anything. Oh, hey, look, the sprite. They both casted curse. So, oh, hey, look at that. We have a negative 7 penalty to all of our attacks. Well, isn't that peachy? Electric arrow on B. Okay, that one's down. Let's have Meryl shoot, and they miss. Pain. 5 points of damage. Attack. Miss. 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 Eh, Lord Double goes down. Uh, electric arrow. There we go. So we got 208 points of experience each. That's fun times. Now let's, uh, before we search for loot, let's go ahead and um, let's bring the paladin back. Because if he's unconscious when a trap goes off, he'll just die. You don't want people to die. That's a, it's a, it's a semi-permanent thing. So uh, let's let's go ahead and cast a uh, a good heal spell on the paladin. Alright, everyone's up. Let's search the area. Oh, hey look, we found a nice big wooden box. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, detect magic with Lambda. It's magic and it's trapped. So I'll have Albert try to remove the trap. Oh, darts! A swarm of poisonous darts fill the air. But hey look, you got three gold, twelve gems. And everyone is poisoned now. And you know what that means. That means we have to pay 25 gold pieces each to have the poison removed. I don't even think I have that much gold. So, uh, let's... Let's see, who's unconscious? Okay, uh, four. Lambda's unconscious. So let's go ahead. Cast a heal spell with burn. Get Lambda back up. So is Lambda poisoned or just unconscious? Okay, so two people are poisoned, that means it's going to cost me 50 gold in order to, uh, to fix that. 
And let me just go, uh, I have to remember which way to go. I believe it's this way. Okay, and the Temple Moon Shadow is right here. So, yeah, uh, who's poisoned? Lord Double and Burn are poisoned. So let's go ahead and uh, get that fixed. So on Lord Double, gather your gold. Oh look, we only have 40 gold. So guess what that means? It means that not everyone is going to have their health restored. That's what that means. So I'm gonna have the Paladin restored. And Burn is just going to have to, uh, yeah, he's just gonna have, they're just gonna have to go without, uh, without uh, health for a while. You know, tough, but such such is the way. So anyway, we're back here. We're in the room. Uh, we're in the room where we encountered the monsters. And you know, other than the little bit of poison, I think we're doing okay. So, uh, hey, look. Let's look around the room. I don't see anything. Oh, hey, look, a trap door. A trap door. Please wait. Darkness. So, yeah, I just walked around the room and, oop, trap door. So, where am I now? Well, I'm in the darkness. So, let's go ahead and have Lambda cast a spell. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and cast, like, a light spell. And I'm gonna go ahead and cast a, uh, hold on. I'm gonna cast a leather skin spell. Okay, so we just fell down a trap door and we are now. So, where are we? Well, yeah, we, uh, so here's what happened we fell down a trap door in the town of Sorpical, and the trap door takes us right into the middle of the, uh, the Sorpical cavern, the dungeon underneath the town. So, uh, yeah, let's get out of here, right? Oh, hey, look! A group of a shitload of fire ants. Uh, can we retreat? Nowhere to run. So, uh, good luck. Oh, one point of damage. Oh, feels terrible. Uh, let's see if we can do this. So yeah, that is a lot of fire ants. That is like, that's a group of eight fire ants, which is, that's bad. It's really bad. Okay, but fortunately only the first three can actually attack. <laughs> oh man, the ants, oh no. So let's, uh, let's see. The paladin is very low. Uh, but we're on Lambda right now, so let's cast an Electric Arrow spell. Alright, got a kill. Meryl. Missed. Okay. So let's heal up the Paladin. I'm gonna use a Light Healing spell. And let's keep up the offensive. Man, everybody's missing. Oh, hey look! <clears throat> the Paladin goes down. Uh, I think Burn went down as well. Yeah, so Burn is now unconscious and poisoned, and that was our healer. Okay, that was our goddamn healer. So, um, I think we're fucked now. So, uh, let's, uh, the only thing we can really do is try to, f to finish the fight. That's all we really got. Yeah, Mike the Knight goes down. Lambda goes down. Uh, can we run away? Can we retreat? No, we cannot. Well, that's game over. The shadow of death has fallen upon your party. Now, fortunately you may renew your quest from the last inn in which you stayed, but uh, what that means is that all the progress that I made after I rested in the inn, that's all gone, alright? So like, uh, getting into that fight with the sprites, that's gone. Um, yeah, yeah, that's all. That's all done. So, so all the loot, all the EX, that's gone. So let's go ahead and go back to town. I'm gonna reform the party. So, uh, you know, Paladin first, then the Knight, and then the Mages. 
and then uh, yeah, then the robber and the archer. And there we go. So yeah, that's how quickly things can go bad. All right, like I just want to make it very clear that things in this game can go really bad really fast. All right, like things can go terrible so quickly. Hmm. Oh, I think I want to sell that scale armor. Uh, in due time, though. In due time. So let's look around here. Um, so where do we want to go? Well, I've adventured in the dungeon under Sorpagal. So here's the thing. Um, underneath Sorpagal, there is, in fact, something to do there. So there's an arena. There's a massive arena, and you go into it, and if you participate, you'll have to fight some really powerful enemies. And they'll kick your ass. They'll, they'll kill you dead. Um, and you die in the arena, you die for real. So, yeah. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go outside. Alright, we are going to adventure beyond the town of Sorpagal. And let's see what wonders await us. Okay, here we are, in the wilderness beyond Sorpagal. So let me just switch my map out to the, uh... So let's see, we're in map C2 right now. So let me just bring that up. Okay, got my map. It's all ready to go. Which, oh yeah, here, here's, here's the map of the area. Okay, like, this, this is a map of the area right here. Um... Uh, okay. Oh, hey, Red Bear. It's been a while. I'm just, uh, continuing the adventure of Might and Magic. Okay, let's, uh, so here's the thing. Um, in the wilderness, there's something really fun. So I'm gonna go over here. And, uh, okay, here we are. So in this little corner of the woods, a glowing white column touch it. Now here's what this is, okay? This glowing white column is like a, it's like a random teleportation thing. So if I touch it, it will randomly teleport the party somewhere. You don't know where, but it'll just randomly teleport you. So of course, like an idiot, I'm going to touch it. So where am I now? Uh, no idea. Like, I have literally no idea where I am right now. I'm in the mountains, wherever I am. Now, you might be thinking, you know, how fucked am I? But not quite. So, I'm going to go ahead and use Lambda. And I'm going to have her cast a location spell. <clears throat> Alright, here we are. So, we're in map sector C2. So, we're on the same map. We are at surface 13, X13, Y8, facing north. So here's what you do with that, okay? So I, on my map, so the map, it has coordinates, okay? Like it has an X and Y scale. So I'm just gonna look, okay, X13, okay, okay, I got it. So uh, let's, let's see, let me scale my map up a little. So X13, Y8. So, 13, 8, and then I'm just gonna, like, take my finger here and... Okay. Got it pegged on the map, so I know exactly where I am right now, okay? I know exactly where I am. So, let's just go ahead and, uh... Let's continue going north. Although, uh, you know, let's go adventuring, actually. Oh, hey, look! We encountered a group of six rabid jackals and five thieves. So, okay, so a group of eleven. So, um, we've encountered a group of eleven monsters. Uh, I've never encountered a thief before, so I don't know how that's gonna go down, but, um, I'm eager to find out. So let's attack them. Hmm. Okay, so I'm going to have Lambda cast a sleep spell on A. It's not as effective as I would like, 
but it did put some of them to sleep. So let's shoot down that rabid jackal. You missed. And it's their turn now. Uh, the thieves don't seem to hit all that hard. So uh, I'm not overly worried yet, anyway. Oh, hey, look! Uh, they got to take another turn. They, they got to take two turns. That's, that's nice. So let's fight and miss. Fight and miss. Fight and miss. This is not this is not a good start. Um, this is really not a good start. Uh, let's have Lambda cast a sleep spell on F or on E. Hmm. Again, not the results I was looking for. Shoot. Uh, let's shoot uh, thief. Let's shoot the thief. Can we can we shoot the thief? Hold on. Shoot, thief, miss. All right, the man they they're getting like three turns in a row. Okay, who needs healing? Surprisingly, no one needs healing right now. So I'm gonna have Burn cast a pain spell on the jackal. There we go. Uh, attack. All right, so we got two jackals down. Let's have Albert fight the thief. Two points. Fight. Miss. Mm. Oh, Lambda goes down. Uh, that's not good. And, man, they're, they're getting so many turns. Okay, let's have Burn get Lambda back up. And let's fight. Let's fight harder. Alright, one thief down. One jackal down. God damn, they hit hard. Well, it's not that they hit hard, it's that they all attack at once and they get so many turns. They get so goddamn many turns. So I'm gonna have Lambda cast sleep again. Alright. Alright, we're putting them to sleep. Okay, so almost all of them are asleep now. That's good. Okay, let's have Burn cast a Pain spell on F. I just want to kill that thief as soon as possible. Like, just get him down. There we go. Okay, now, we are in a very good situation here. So, the Rabid Jackals, there's only two left. There's only three thieves, and they're all asleep. So, we're right where we want to be right now. So, let's start uh, picking off the Jackals. Oh, hold on. All of the thieves just suddenly woke up. That's, yeah, now we are not where we want to be. Uh, okay, only two thieves now. Let's get Lambda back up. And let's fight. Miss. Fight. Miss. Fight. Okay, thief down. Hmm. Okay, let's have Lambda. You know, Lambda has been on the defensive for too long. Yeah, took a jackal down. It's only one left, and they're down. 133 points of experience for everyone. And is there any loot? Ooh, yes there is. There's a nice plump wooden box. So let's just uh, detect traps. Okay, no magic, but it is trapped. So let's have Albert remove it. Okay, nice! So we got shares worth 44 gold each. So 44, again, that's 44 times 6 party members, so... That's a lot of gold, okay? Like, that's a, that is a good amount of gold. We can afford to get that uh, chainmail armor now. So let's go ahead and rest. No encounters, nice. I'm gonna have Lambda cast a, uh, a leather skin spell. Alright. It's for, uh, see, fortunately, we don't have to cast the light spell out here. Now, okay, we're in a situation now, okay? Like, we are in a very interesting situation, so... So I just found a treasure chest worth, you know, 44 gold each. That's a lot of gold. That, you know, 44 times 6. I could... 
I could try to get back to town as quickly as possible now. Or I could press my luck and try to, you know, keep adventuring and see if I find more loot. Now, again, if I was playing... <clears throat> If I was playing any other RPG, I would say, "Oh man, look, we're doing great. Let's let's get in there. Let's uh let's go deeper." No. Um in this game, I'm going to say, "Let's take what we've got and go back to town." So, I'm going to try to do that now. I'm just going to try to get back to town in one piece. Okay, we're very close. There we go. So, we're back in Sorpagal now. All right. Let's go to the, uh... Oh, first off, let's go to the blacksmith, because I've got a ton of gold. Yeah, let's gather that gold. 286 gold. So, let's go over to... Merrill. And let's buy armor. And I'm going to buy some chain mail for Merrill. Oh, wait. First, I have to gather my gold. And then... Let's buy the armor. Alright, now, how about... How about Lambda? See, so right now, Lambda only has padded armor. So, can Lambda wear any better armor? No. Uh, Lambda can only wear padded armor. They don't get anything else. That's unfortunate. So, let's go ahead and tab over to Meryl. And let's remove the scale mail. So right now they have three points of armor. And now they have five. So they have five AC now. So yeah, look, our, our paladin, they got seven AC. The knight has four. which He's wearing splint mail, which is even better than chain. It's just, he doesn't have a, uh, he doesn't have a shield. So that's why his AC is lower. Alright, Burn has scale armor, so they got 5 AC, 1, 3, 5, okay. So our AC is much better than it was. So now we're going to sell things. Um, I found a short sword, and uh, it's not really worth much, so I'm going to sell it. Hmm. Okay, let's have, uh, so Meryl sell the scale armor. And I believe Burn has something to sell to. Yep. Okay. So we've got a, a decent amount of gold. Everyone is is fully armored out. So let's go ahead and rest. Well, first off, we're gonna save, and then we're gonna rest. No encounters. And uh, we're good. We are good now. So. Okay. What do we want to do? We've got plenty food. Uh, we got a decent amount of gold. Everyone is as equipped as they can possibly be for the moment. Alright, like, there's better equipment in the game, of course, but we're as good equipped as we can be for now. So, uh, let's, I don't know, let's poke around. Um, hmm... So we could go back outside. I don't know. Man, the outside seems pretty rough. There's also the Sorpagal Underground. And Sorpagal Underground is... Well... You know, there's an arena. I haven't really tr I guess I could try to beat the arena. So let's, yeah, let's do that. Let's try to beat the arena. So let's go down into the darkness. And first off, let me switch my maps out. So I'm just gonna get the uh, the map of the cavern. There we go. And okay, let's have Lambda cast a light spell. And let's make our way over to the Sorpagal Arena. Gonna prove ourselves in the arena if we can even make it to the arena alive. You know, that tends to be a problem. Oh wait, hold on. Okay, here it is. The arena. So I'm going to have Lambda cast Leatherskin. Alright, 
let's go into the arena. So here's the arena. It's a it's a really big open room. Around the room, there are several balconies filled with cheering peasants. A man asks, Will you participate? And I'll say yes. Oh hey, troglodytes, and they got the initiative, so so three troglodytes, one rabid leper, and a locust plague. Well, that seems fun. Uh, I, I don't know if I can put any of this to sleep, but let's try. So, Lambda, put them to sleep. They're not affected. Okay, the rabid leper, I put that to sleep, but that was the only one. Now, the locust plague, I think the locust plague is probably the probably the toughest enemy. So yeah, I'm going straight for that Locust Plague. Oh god, they have poison! So the troglodytes, they, they're spraying poison. Oh my god, everyone is poisoned now. Which we know about the poison, we know what that does. Okay, um, but no one's really injured, right? No. So let's cast a Pain spell on the Locust Plague. There we go. So yeah, the thing about the Locust is they hit for like 15 points of damage each. Yeah, that had to be removed. So let's go for the Troglodytes. I, I feel like I might actually be able to win this. Like, maybe, right? Okay, Lambda. Um, let's cast Electric Arrow on A. Because the Troglodytes don't seem to be sleepable. Okay, one troglodyte down, and uh, let's shoot the... I don't know what the rabid leper does, so let's shoot him. He's wounded. Uh, none of us are really hurt, so I'm going to cast a pain spell on the leper. There we go. Yeah, I think I'll actually win this. This will be my first time winning an arena match. Okay, let's have Albert... Uh... Let's have Albert fight. Alright, only one troglodyte left. Um, yeah, let's do it. All out attack. Shoot. Nice! We won! A hundred points of experience each. So I won the arena match. Um, I... Did I... Oh, wait. Around the room, there are several about... Oh, God. So I could just keep fighting in the arena over and over. But before I do that, is there any like, is there any loot from the encounter? So search, nothing. Okay, so like, I felt all good having won my first arena match, but um, but there was no loot. And okay, here's the bad thing. Um, everyone is poisoned, and it costs 25 gold each to remove the poison. So I just lost like, uh, I just lost a hundred gold, basically, because that's what it's going to cost me to, to fix that. Uh, let's rest. And then it goes dark, so I have to, yeah, recast leather skin and... So yeah, I mean, I guess I feel good that I beat the encounter, but at the same time, uh, all this poison, it's reducing everyone's maximum hit points. Like, okay, look. See Lambda? Lambda's health is only 5 right now. Lambda should have 11 points of health, but she's only got 5 now. Yeah, like the... Man, that poison, like, it just... It completely wrecks everyone's health. So let's try to get out of here alive. Alright. That's my goal right now, is to get the hell out of here alive. Oh, hey! Acidic Blobs. Um, I've actually never encountered... Like, this is kind of crazy, isn't it? I, I want you to just stop and think about it. How many times have I streamed this game? For like, three to five hours each time. And I've been down here before, I've never encountered an Acidic Blob. Like, I had never encountered a hag, either. I mean, 
Like, I'm encounter- like, how many enemies are there in this game? Because I keep encountering new enemy types, like, even, like, ten hours into a dungeon. I don't- like, how many enemies are there? Okay, let's cast a spell. Let's cast Electric Arrow. Didn't do much. Oh, wow. Okay, these things- yeah, they're hitting twice for 15 points. Um... These guys hit hard. They don't mess around. Okay, they, they took a lot of damage out of Mike the Knight. So, uh, let's heal him. Okay, one blob down. So these things, uh, they're a lot like mutant larvas, but unlike mutant larvas, these things do a lot of damage. Like, a lot. And they have a lot of hit points, too. Oh, wow, they just took the paladin. Yeah, they took the pally out. Oh, damn, they're spraying acid! So, not only... Yeah, not only do they have an attack, but they can also spray acid on the party. That's... that's rough. That's really rough. Paladin is down, so, um... Oh, man, our magic isn't doing anything. Let's bring the paladin back. And let's shoot. Miss. Attack. M miss. Uh, Lambda. Cast a spell. Still not getting a kill. Okay. Two blobs left. Uh, how's our health? You know, I'm gonna use the cleric to get some damage in. Oh god, these things have too much- they have way too much hit points. Oh, nice. Pot roast. Mmm. Which reminds, I haven't eaten anything. Like, I haven't eaten anything all day. Oh. I should get to that. I wonder, it's not too late. If I, uh, if I close, if I end the stream soon, I could still order a pizza or something. Hmm. <laughs> okay, the paladin only has, uh... Paladin only has four hit points. I'm gonna have Lambda keep on it. Oh look, oh look, isn't that great? So this acidic blob, this acidic blob, they're immune. They're immune to Matt, that's great. Random resistances. Also, hey Luna, I've uh, been playing a lot of games today. And uh, you know, might and magic time. Like out of all the games I played, this is the one people seem to like the most. Alright, blob went down. Yeah, so the thing about these acid blobs is they don't just have a regular attack. They can also shoot acid on members that are in the back of the the uh, party. So yeah, I'm uh, I'm a bit worried here, even though there's only one left. Okay, look, the acidic blob is not affected by pain. Okay. Yeah, there goes the paladin. Pally down. Let's have Lambda cast one point of damage. Okay, try to get the Paladin back up. Three points. And a miss. A miss. I really need a hit. I, I really need them to hit and not miss. Uh, let's try Electric Arrow again. They're not affected. See, again, random resistances. Random resistances and I'm man I'm unloading damage in this thing and it's not dying uh, let's cast a blessing that'll give us more accuracy there we go finally 200 points of exp for everyone that's good that was a good encounter we need to get out of this dungeon like right now okay here's the exit and we're out now before- oh god! We just got jumped by snakes and skeletons. Um, since we're in a corner, we have to fight. <laughs> oh god, um, these aren't too tough though. Okay, these aren't too tough, so I'm gonna cast Electric Arrow on the snake. Meryl, I'm gonna have Meryl shoot the snake. Now, Burn. I'm gonna have Burn cast Turn Undead. Nice. So Turn Undead instantly destroyed two skeletons. 
All right, let's, let's see if we can do this. Okay, electric arrow. One more. They're down. 54 points of EXP each. Is anyone unconscious? No. Let's search. There's a cloth sack. So I'm going to check the cloth sack for traps with Albert. Okay, four gold each. <laughs> well, that's all right, Luna. <clears throat> but uh, today I've been doing... Um, so, I, yeah, I've been doing this for a while. I did D&D &D Kingdom Simulator for a while. And before that, I did like an hour worth of Dreamfall, which, you know, that's probably the most... Uh, you know, the most modern out of the games I played today. But uh, it was the one people liked the least. You know, people just, uh, just, uh, kind of jump ship on that one. Probably because it's so dialogue heavy. I mean, you, you talk to NPCs for like 15 minutes. I, I get it. <laughs> okay, so here's the thing. Before we go to the temple, so everyone is poisoned, so three, four, five, and six are poisoned. So let's handle that real quick. So starting with three, let's restore health. Then four, gather gold, restore health. Five, gather gold, restore health. Six, gather gold, restore health. Okay. So yeah, we just lost a hundred gold. That's nice. But all of our conditions are restored. I'm going to rest. So the thing about poison, and I explained it before, but you know, again, the thing about poison is that when you are poisoned, your maximum health goes down progressively. So eventually, everyone who is poisoned will only have one hit point, and that's like their max health. That's not like, uh, it's not like their temporary health points, that's their maximum health points. Oh, hey, look. So I'm just trying to get back to the inn. I I'm trying to get back to the inn to save my game, but I got jumped by a bunch of gremlins. So let's do it. All right, let's go ahead and uh, yeah, no. Uh, Burn can only cast level two spells, and so the the level that you need to cure poison is level four. You need to be able to cast level four spells in order to cure poison. All right, let's go ahead and have Lambda put them to sleep. It's partially effective. Mostly effective. And let's kill the one that isn't asleep. There we go. And now let's have Albert shoot. Alright. We're doing good here. Electric arrow. And shoot. And pain. Alright, and attack. So at this point, we just uh, just all out attack. Alright, Lambda, Electric Arrow. Alright, they're all down. 104 points of EXP for everyone. How about that loot? You found a wooden chest. Uh, let's just, uh, let's just have Albert find the traps and open it. Oh, Death Ray! A blinding light sears through the party. But hey, look, we found a silver shield. That's nice. So, a Death Ray. Oh, look at that. It blinded the party. Um, yeah, like, it didn't, it didn't knock them unconscious, but it blinded them. Uh... Well, you know, don't ask me too much about, uh, like, I don't know the maths. How did, how to spreadsheets, I don't know. <laughs> Alright, let's, uh, well, let's rest first, because people are blinded. Okay, we're good. Let's rest at the inn. X out of that. So, okay, we're saved, that's good. Now, we found a silver shield, and, uh, so here's the, here's the deal. How do you know what's better, right? Because right now, Lord Double has, he has a small shield plus one, and that's it. 
So how do you know? Like, what? which one is better? Is the silver shield better than the small shield plus one? Well, in order to find that out, I have to go into the clue book. Alright, so I have to look in the clue book, and it has a listing of all the items in the game. So I have to look at the chart, and, uh, okay, here we go. So we got a list of swords. Like, one-handed stuff. That's not what I need. I need, like, shields. Where, where's the shield listing? Armor. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. So right now, I have a small shield plus, plus one. So small shield plus one, it has 100 zero out of two. That's its value? Okay. So the small shield has a zero two value, which is, that's like two defense, right? Okay, so it provides two AC. The silver shield also provides two AC, so the silver shield is actually just as good. However, it has a bonus to it. Alright. So the silver shield has a special bonus, and you will only know about this bonus if you look in the clue book. And the bonus is that it provides resistance. It provides 20% resistance to sleep. So it gives you a slight chance of resisting sleep spells. That's not so bad. And the classes that can use it are Knights, Paladins, Clerics, and R. A robber. So robbers can use it as well. Well, you know what I'd like to do? I'd like to put it on the Cleric, actually. If we can. So let's take the Silver Shield, and let's trade it over to, uh, to burn. So I'm going to trade the Silver Shield. Okay, there we go. So I'm gonna have Burn equip Silver Shield. Oh, they can't do that because, okay, so Burn has the Great Hammer, which is a mighty, powerful weapon, but it's a two-handed weapon, okay? Two-hander. Uh, so here we, here we come to a decision. So do we want the Cleric to have a good weapon that they're very rarely going to use, or do we want them to have a silver shield that gives them better protection and makes them slightly resistant to sleep spells? Yeah, I, I want the cleric to be well defended, so let's take the hammer off. And let's put the silver shield on. 7 AC. Like, just instantaneously, you get 7 AC. Which is quite nice. Yes, uh, yeah, the shield is definitely the way to go with the cleric. So now we have a great hammer. And, okay, now I have to look and see how good is the great hammer. So, great hammer. So the great hammer is 12 points of damage. Um, that's a really good weapon, actually. So, I'm, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I am going to trade the great hammer to Lord Double. All right. And I think we're going to have the Paladin, yeah, we're going to have the Paladin switch out to use a, uh, to use a nice good weapon, something that'll do a lot of damage. Uh, maybe. I don't know. The thing about the Paladin is they don't have nearly as good of a health. Like, if you compare the Paladin's health to the Knight's health, the Knight has 39 hit points, the Paladin only has 17. So having good defense is kind of important for a paladin. Yeah, see, I could say, like, put it on Mike, but Mike already has a two-handed weapon. He has a glaive, which is a pretty good weapon. But, um, yeah, the great hammer. So here's the decision we have to make. And this is a more close decision than it is for the paladin, or for the, for the cleric. So for the paladin... You could either lose, like, two points of AC and get a weapon that does significantly more damage than your club, or you could equip, yeah, you could equip the, uh, you know, the sword and shield and have more AC, but significantly less damage. It's a tough call. See, with the cleric, it's more cut and dry, 
but with the Paladin, not so much. I don't know. I think more damage is a good thing. I think more damage is always a good thing. So, I'm for now, I'm going to remove the club and the small shield, which, yeah, look at that. Two less points of AC. But we're going to equip the Great Hammer. There we go. And the Great Hammer is a... It's an awesome melee weapon. It 12 damage. That's, that's great. Um, so now, who do we want to give the small shield and club to? Well, we're going to give Burn the club. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and trade the... Uh, small, you know, the, the club, and trade that over to burn. So, uh, trade D. And the small shield plus one. So, here's the thing. Small shield, the robber can actually use a shield. Seems a little weird, but the robber can use a shield. So, I'm gonna trade with Albert, and I'm gonna give him the small shield. So, here's how this is gonna work. So, burn is gonna equip the club. So now Burn still has a weapon, but they also have a really nice shield in addition to that. And Albert, well, let's see if he can equip it, because he might not be able to, because he, he has a bow as well. Or not a bow, but um, a crossbow. So let's try it. He can, so okay. So Albert, he's got, he uses, in melee, he uses a short sword and a small shield. And then in... Uh, at a range, he uses his crossbow. Now, I want to take a quick look, because I wasn't quite looking at it, so... He has 3 AC without the shield, 5 AC with the shield. So Albert, yeah, he, he's doing pretty good there. And, uh, we don't have any excess items. That's good. So yeah, that's, um... That's just kind of switching some things around. Let's save. So now, yeah, the Paladin is going to do a lot more damage, but he's going to be slightly uh, more vulnerable. The Cleric, though, is going to be much better defended. The Robber is going to be better defended. And the Cleric didn't really lose anything by not having the Hammer. I mean, the, the Hammer, look, uh, because the Cleric is in the middle row, they very rarely get a chance to attack in melee anyway, so they're not really missing anything. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my maps here, and I'm gonna bring up the cavern under Sorpagal. We're gonna go back down in there, now that we've saved our game, we're all rested up. Uh, let's, t let's make another little trip down into the cavern, and I gotta decide where in there I want to go, so let's, let's see. Let's go this way. And we're going back down into the dungeon. Now, I won my first arena match. That felt good at the same time. It got everyone poisoned. And that didn't feel so good. So let's uh, have Lambda cast Leather Skin. And then Light. So yeah, the reason I cast Leather Skin is because it, if you look at the spell effects, yeah, it actually lasts even when you're not in combat. So you cast Leather Skin once, and it'll last for quite a while. It, it basically saves you a turn in combat, so you don't have to waste a turn casting spells. Alright, so I've been to the north, I've been to the west. Now I haven't... I'll tell you right now, I have not explored every room to the west. Alright, I haven't checked every room yet, and I don't know. Let's Let's try it. Let's, uh, yeah, there's a couple of rooms, and I'm gonna go hit those up. So, let's unlock with Albert. Oh, spikes! Deadly spikes spring forth! Uh, it didn't, it didn't hurt, didn't hurt that bad. So, let's go over here. Now, we are about to encounter a gauntlet of fixed encounters. Okay? Like, Four encounters all in a row, and they're all fixed. They have to happen. Now, we might be able to run away from some of them, and that'll save us the encounter, but let's see. So, encounter one is a group of flesh eaters. So, let's try to retreat. Nowhere to run. 
Alright, let's have Lambda cast a sleep spell. It hit most of them. And let's have Meryl shoot the one that it didn't hit. Okay. So, wow, Burn can still attack. So let's have Burn fight, uh, fight C. There we go. Yeah. See, even with that plus one, uh, you know, that plus two club, Burn can still get some kills. Alright, now we equipped the Paladin with a giant hammer. Let's see if it works. Six points of damage. Well, that's better than his usual, so I'll say that's a victory. And let's just go down the list attacking only the ones that are slept. Oh, this this flesh eater. Uh, he rolled good on his uh, on his health dice, and he's down. All right. See, I love it. We just we're just attacking a bunch of enemies that are asleep. It's great. Ooh, 14 points of damage. That is what I like to see. Okay, and let's cast a fire spell. Two points. Alright, just have to... There we go. So, 41 points for everyone. Now, like I said, this hallway is full of fixed encounters. So, I'm going to take one step forward. And we get attacked by... Uh, by eight mutant larva. Alright, so let's have Lambda. Sleep doesn't actually work so good here. So let's cast uh, Electric Arrow on H. Wounded. Let's shoot G. So yeah, I try to, like, how I do it is I usually, I try to shoot the ones that are in back because they can't melee. So like, I kind of get them out of the way. And then the, the melee characters, they, you know, they deal with the front row. Usually that's what I do. Now, mutant larvas, they're not too tough. Oh, it's it's eight, but they're not that tough. So let's go ahead and cast Pain. Oh, okay. Very little damage, so they're not... Uh, mutant larvas do not feel much pain. Alright, six points of damage. Alright. So, yeah, they're only doing, like, one point of damage. That's that's nothing. Uh, let's cast another fire spell on E. They're down. Alright, shoot and a miss. Cast. Yeah, pain does not seem to work on them. Not very well, anyway. Yeah, let's shoot. And let's try that fire. Fire seems to be effective on them. Kind of. It's a lower level spell. And let's shoot B. They go down. Cast. No. Let's save it. There we go. 66 points for everyone, and I'm guessing no loot. No loot. So I'm going to take one more step forward. And here we go. A group of seven skeletons. All jazz handsing right at us, just shaking their hands right at you. Okay, they're skeletons. That's a good thing. We know why. So I'm just gonna pick some of them off. Burn, cast turn undead. It only killed one. That's okay. Ooh, the paladin is down. But we're taking them down pretty well, too, so I don't worry. Uh, let's cast Electric Arrow. Not much damage. And burn, go ahead and get the Paladin back up. And let's shoot. Okay, one more. Let's try that Fire spell. Kind of effective. Remember, the resistances in this game, uh, they are semi-random. So sometimes enemies will just be immune to your advances. That's always nice. So we got 58 points of EXP each. That's good. Let's search the area. We got a leather sack, so let's have Albert open it. Five gold each. So that's 30 gold in total. Now, the next encounter is going to be a rough one. So let's rest. 
And let's have Lambda cast Leather Skin. And then cast some, some Light. Alright, let's take one more step forward. And oh hey, it's a group of eight fire ants. Now these enemies are tough. These are these are not trivial encounters. Fire ants will fuck you up. And they also can't be put to sleep. They uh they they're pretty much immune to sleep spells. Pretty much every bug that you encounter is immune to sleep. So let's cast an electric arrow attack. Alright, six points. Let's shoot. And I'm gonna cast Blessing. You know, boost that accuracy. Hmm. Alright. Let's attack and a miss. Attack and a miss. Attack and a miss. Even with the Blessing, they still miss. Electric arrow? Okay, that was a kill. Let's shoot. Got a kill. Alright, it goes down the list. Hmm. Not too bad. Uh, we're doing okay for damage. Alright, let's cast a pain spell. And let's, uh, let's fight Fire Ant B. Two points of damage. Man, the Paladin is just disappointing me. I mean, their damage is just, it's never good. It is never good. Right, let's have Albert cast, uh, or let's have Albert just attack. Got a hit. Mike the Knight. Six points. Lambda. Uh, um, no, no, not fight. Although I could have the I could have a mage swing their staff around, but I'm gonna cast an electric arrow. Six points. Shoot. All right. We're getting the kills. We're getting them slowly. All right, three ants left. Five points of damage. That that great hammer just doesn't seem to be working out for the paladin. They just don't seem to be able to deliver damage that they should. Okay, and let's see. Let's cast electric arrow. Shoot, miss. Attack, miss. Attack, miss. Attack. Two, attack and miss. So yeah, what what really bothers me in this game more than anything is when you when you miss like six times in a row, and it's just you feel it. You feel how I don't know. You you feel how how fucked you are when you just miss constantly. It makes the fight seem like it's unwinnable. You know. Uh, let's have Lambda cast Electric Arrow. Alright. And shoot, and they're all down. 133 points each. So, search the area. Ooh, ooh. This right here. So this is a good one. Okay. So we just found a big silver chest. Alright, now silver chests, those are... Um, like, you know, there's, there's wood, then there's iron... Well, there's the sacks, then there's wood, then there's iron, then there's silver. So this is a really good treasure. So let's detect traps. It is magic, and it is most definitely trapped. So, yeah, let's go ahead and have Albert. Let's, uh, you know, cross your fingers and, and hope to roll the dice successfully. So, Albert, open it up. All right, six gold each, and uh, a bag of garbage, and a scimitar. Mmm, that bag of garbage. Mm. Now, I know that, look, the bag of garbage, that seems like, why, why, right? Why would you want that? Well, here's the thing. That bag of garbage is worth 50 gold, okay? Th that bag is worth a lot. So, now here we have a thing, the scimitar. So, I need to take a look in my uh, in my clue book and I need to see exactly what a scimitar is and how much it does 
So I'm looking under one-handed weapons. Okay, here we go, the scimitar. So the scimitar, it has a gold value of 40. Uh, apparently knights, paladins, archers, and robbers can use it. And it has a base damage of 7. So it's got a base damage of 7, so... Uh, that's... that's not terrible. Uh, it's definitely not terrible. Uh, how about the archer? I think the archer, that might be an upgrade for them. Yeah, uh, the archer has a short sword, which... The short sword has 6 base damage, so... Yeah, that's, um, that's a little bit better damage than a, than a short sword. It's nothing amazing, but it is better, so... I'll go ahead and take the short sword off of Meryl. And I will... Yeah, I'm gonna trade the scimitar... ...to Meryl. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Meryl is an archer, and 9 out of 10 times, they're going to be using a, um... They're gonna be using their bow. But when they don't use their bow, they'll be using a short... a, uh, a scimitar. So that's how that is gonna... That's how that's going to go down. Alright, now let me go back to my clue book, and, uh... Let's see. Okay, got my clue book up. My handy-dandy clue book. And, uh, yeah. So again, we're in one of those situations, right? So here's the deal. If I turn around right now, go back to town, and I rest at the inn, and I come back, I'm going to have to fight through all four of those encounters again to get to where I am right now. But, if I keep going, if I keep going, and, you know, I'm like, look, I want to power through this dungeon. Well, what if I open the door, and there's an insanely powerful monster that just wipes the floor with the party? Then I'll lose that scimitar. I'll lose the gold. I'll lose the EXP. You know, you gotta think about that. It's a tough call. I mean... I don't want to fight through those four encounters again, but I'll have to if I, uh, you know, encounter something that's a little bit too big. Either way, let's rest. And let's have Lambda reapply all of her magic. So reapply the light spell, reapply the leather skin spell. Yeah, it's just, man, this game, it is a, it's a constant balancing act. I mean, See, we got four doors here. Uh, there's only like two doors I haven't looked inside of yet. And this is one of them. Well, that's the thing, right? You can be in pretty good shape, and then you can encounter an enemy that just kills your party in one hit. Um, or you might open a door, and oh hey, it's a puddle of acid. Have fun with that. But, uh... Yeah, let's try it. Let's, let's unlock the door. Yeah, push it to the limit. Alright, let's yeah, let's unlock the door with Albert. Oh, blades! Razor sharp blades slice through the party. Which didn't do all that much damage, but um ouch, nonetheless. I don't see anything, but let's look around. Okay, it's just an it's just an empty room. That's relieving, actually. So there's one other door I haven't looked in, and it's this one. So let's unlock with Albert. Success! Oh god. Oh god. Oh, oh. So remember the thing about sprites. The thing about sprites is they can debuff your accuracy to the point where you cannot hit them at all. At which point you're fucked. You're dead. And if they get the initiative, if they roll for initiative and they get to attack first, then they could just, like, they could stack, like, eight curses on the party and we're just done. Like, right away, we're just done. I don't know. Let's, let's try to run away. Okay, good. <laughs> Alright. So we retreated. We managed to get away from them. That's good. Yeah, no, I don't want to deal with that. 
Yeah, see, they could have, like, if they get the initiative, they could have stacked eight curses on the party, which would be like a negative eight penalty to our accuracy, which means, yeah, negative eight to hit, which means you're not hitting shit. So I'm glad, I'm really glad to, uh, to get away from that. So, uh, let's, you know, let's look around, shall we? Let's check some of the other places out. Uh, got a locked door. Albert. Success! Okay. So, is there anywhere I haven't been over here? I don't see anything. Solid walls. Good solid walls, just feeling them out. Uh, I think there's a... Oh yeah, there's something over here. I almost forgot. Yeah, let's let's try it. Let's um try the door with Albert. Ooh, unlock failed. But no trap. Oh, there's the trap. Boiling oil. Streams of boiling oil cover your party. Your your party. Uh. Oh. Hmm. Still not that bad though. Uh, let's have Burn cast a healing spell. All right, are we good? I think we're okay. Oh, oh god! Oh god! Four locusts, a flesh eater, and three minor demons, and any one of those can kill the entire party. Oh, oh god, oh thank god. We surprised them. It says, you surprised a group of monsters. Approach? No. Let me, where, where's that N key? Just, no. Just, just, just fucking no. Yeah. Turn around. Just turn your ass around, and uh, I think maybe we should go back. Like I'm encountering so many dangerous enemies, it's like maybe I should, maybe I should go back to town. But no, <clears throat> no, no, no. We're brave adventurers, okay? We are brave adventurers. So let's go deeper. Encounter. So we got four poltergeists and four sprites. <clears throat> okay, I don't, um... Yeah, I don't really worry about the poltergeists, but the sprites. But there's only four of them, so... I'm willing to fight it out. Oh god, they rolled initiative, and yep, they roll initiative and they start the fight by casting curses. So we already have a negative three penalty to our attack. That's great. That's great. Um, let's have Lambda cast an electric spell on the sprite. Oh, oh, hey, look. The sprite is not affected by magic. That's nice. Uh, burn. Blessing. And let's attack. Shoot, uh, shoot sprite H. Missed. Sprite cast curse. I think we just got cursed twice. Oh, hey, look, both of our fighters are dead. Um, well, not dead, but unconscious. Uh, let's have Lambda cast an electric arrow on the sprite G. They're wounded. Meryl, shoot. You know, the poltergeist seem to be the bigger problem right now. Yeah, so we take one of those out. Burn needs to get Mike the Knight back up. Alright, it's their turn again. They cast a curse. Mike the Knight goes down. Cast, electric arrow. Oh, look, they're not affected now. That's nice. How many were cursed six times? That's good. That's great. Okay, let's fight the sprite F. You missed. Sprites cast curse. Looks like we got, like, what, two or three more curses? Knight goes down. Burn the wit- There goes our healer. Our healer's done. Uh, can we try to retreat? No. The shadow of death has fallen upon your party. So that scimitar, that, that nice scimitar, you lost that. The EXP from the last four fight, you lost that. That's all gone. That's what you get. That's what that's what you get when you uh, when when you try to uh, you know show some initiative and be a good adventurer. That's what you get. That is what you get. I'll give it another shot though. 
All right, let's go into town with uh, yeah, same old party. All right, let me uh, get the party all set up here. Paladin, knight, and yeah, cleric, then lambda, then Albert and Merrill. There we go. Yeah, and we lost all the progress, and we're back at the end now. So no scimitar, no exp, none of that for you. So what do we want to do now? See, this is the thing. You want to make progress. Like, there's all these, you know, tales of epic legendary monsters to slay and, and evil villains, but, but, um, but no. We are going to be, you know, bashing, uh, you know, battle rats and, and things like that. We're going to be doing that for a long-ass time. Now, actually, there is one thing I might be able to do. So, okay, here's the deal. I actually got a quest, alright? I got a quest, and it says, um, I, I wrote it down. So the quest is, take Vellum Scroll to Wizard Agar in Erlequin. The quest giver is in the Sorpagal Cavern. That's what I wrote down. So, uh, we do actually have a quest, which is to take a Vellum Scroll to Erlequin the town of Erlequin. Now, you might be wondering, we're not going to survive in the wilderness, so how are we going to get to Erlequin? Well, uh, I might have a solution to that problem. Uh, just give me a second here. So, there's a certain, there's a teleport merchant, okay? Like, there's, there's a guy who will teleport you around. Um, if I can find him. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to look for the teleport guy. I think he's over here. So, yeah, this hallway, you don't see anything, right? Like, there's nothing in the hallway. But if I turn into this brick wall, there's a statue. Now, okay, this is not the one I thought it was, but let's check it out all the same. So what is the, sa uh, what is the statue? The secret statue. What does it say? Oh! There are many dungeons like me. Find the right pair, and you'll discover the key. The ancient seer Og has lost his sight. The idols will help to end his plight. So, okay. Again, that's more things to know for later. So, let's try to get out of here. There's another secret hole in the wall, and I'm going to try to get to that real quick. Um, so I'm going the wrong way. Okay, the other secret is near the exit of town. Oh god, kobolds! Um, sure, let's attack them. Let's attack the kobolds. But yeah, there, there's basically a secret teleport guy, and he'll take the party from one town to another. But you have to find him. That's the tricky part. The tricky part is he's uh, he's kind of difficult to find because it's a secret. You see, you see his uh, he's hiding in the wall somewhere. I know it's perfect. So let's have the cleric cast uh, w uh, pain, not wound, pain. Three points. All right, one kobold down. Let's fight. Electric arrow. I, I just want to, you know, lightning bolt, lightning bolt, lightning bolt. Uh, okay, let's let's shoot Kobold C. They're down. Cast. Hmm. Okay, I think we got this. We got this down. Uh. A lambda got the kill and shoot. There we go. 41 points. Well, it's not as good as all the experience points I lost in the dungeon, but I guess it's something. Oh, hey, you got a leather sack. Albert, three gold each. Again, uh, not as good as what we lost, but. Okay, now, I'm going the wrong way again. It's so easy to get turned around. Okay, so there's a secret. And the secret is right here. 
So this looks like nothing, right? This looks like a wall. But there you go. A tenacious leprechaun appears, saying, Traveling to the roads is quite dangerous. Save for the strong and courageous. Only one gem you lose, and I'll send you to the town you choose. So, he's rhyming. He's a rhyming leprechaun. So, yeah, one gem, and we can go wherever we want to go. That's, uh, that's the basic gist of it. So, where I want to go... Well, let me look at my clue book. Uh, town 1 is Sorpagal. Okay, then you got Town 2, Town 3, Town 4, Town 5. I want to go to Erlequin, so I'm going to choose Town 5. Please wait, and here we go. So we are now, apparently, in the town of Erlequin. Uh, well, let's double check that. Okay, so let's have Lambda cast a location spell. So that's like one and seven. Yeah. All right. So we're in map sector B1. Uh, B1. Hmm. Okay. Hold on. Let me, uh, let me look for that. B1. Hmm. Okay. So B1 is apparently, apparently region B1 is the uh, the mountains of despair and the quivering forest hmm that's not where I wanted to go uh, but I guess that's the town I guess we're in the right place so the town of Erlequin so we are at X4 Y6 so X4 Y6 okay and we're facing west. X4, Y6. Now let me see if that matches up before I do anything. And the other coordinate is 13, 1. So X4, Y6. Uh, which I'm looking at my, my thing here. And we're facing west, so... Yeah, that looks about right. Not quite right, but about right. Yeah, here we go. The Inn of Erlequin. So, we are in the town of Erlequin. Okay, so I know where I am. Now, uh, we are looking for... We, we have to take the Vellum Scroll to the Wizard Agar in Erlequin. I have no idea where the Wizard Agar is, but we're gonna look for him, okay? Like, we just have to look... We have to look through every house, I guess. And this map is huge. Um, so here's the map. Here is the map of Erlequin. All right, like this. This is the map of Erlequin. Part of it, anyway. It's a, it's a big map. So, uh, okay, I'm just gonna look around now. Uh, let's. Where do I start? That's the thing. Where do I even start? I guess let's go over. Oh, a barrier. Some, what, what magic is this? What witchery is this? Okay. So a sign above the door reads, Current Trends Iron Works. Well, it, hey, you know what? This is a whole new town. Ooh, a boisterous half-orc proclaims, We carry the very latest. Browse. Yes. So what has he got? He's got, ooh, nice. So he's got flails, long swords, long bows, great bows, great hammers, flambergs. I mean, okay. So I guess we can go to other towns and we can like I, I guess we can get like the good stuff right we can go to other towns and get the good gear uh what about armor Ooh, plate mail yeah that's uh hmm yeah they got big shields plate mail uh, oh uh if only i could afford any of that right well let's keep looking around um how about this shop the Tavern of Tall Tales. Um, no. That wouldn't be it. Hmm. 
trying to think, like, I'm looking at the map and I'm thinking, where would a wizard be? If I were a wizard, where would I be? Okay, that's locked. Superior training. Locked. Uh, how about over here? Locked. I don't know, would he be in a locked... See, this is the thing. Would the wizard be in a locked door or not? That's a tricky one. Uh, let's go back over here. So the the temple gouch, temple gouch. Hmm. Four star foods. Hmm. Let's keep looking around. Locked. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to look in some of these locked doors. So let's uh, let's have Albert. Let's have Albert give it a try. Success! Okay, there's nothing in there. And remember, we can be attacked in town, so I'm really nervous about that. Okay, so there was nothing nothing in there. So let's look over here. Unlock. Success. Yeah, the only way I know that uh, the wizard is or isn't here is basically if I just check every door. All right, so let's look in. I don't see nothing. That's this, uh, this last door. Unlock failed. Success! I don't see no wizard. I, I ain't seeing no wizards out here. Hmm, it's a barrier. Like the map is showing that I should be able to, to go in those places. I guess not. Okay. So I've checked all of the houses on the west side of town. So now, I need to get more industrious, and I need to check out the houses on the other side of town. And then I'm gonna have to check all of the little secret places. There's a lot of secret places in here. I'm just saying there's a lot of secrets. So that's the inn. So let's go over this way. And, uh, hmm. Okay. Let's check this door. Albert? Ooh, ice storm! Particles of splintered ice hail through the air. And that killed everyone. No, that blinded them. So let's rest. No encounters. Alright. Oh! Oh! Town treasure! Do you steal it? I don't know. I don't know. Do we want to steal the town treasure? Do uh do do we want to? Uh, are we playing the thief run? Are we um? I I feel like are we are we back in Morrowind and it's time to steal everything that's not nailed down? Uh, I I don't know. Like, what kind of what kind of repercussions would there be for stealing the town treasure? What what kind of repercussion? I wish I could save first. See, I, I love that Red Bear. Red Bear is like, save first. It's like, there ain't no saving. There ain't no saving in this game. And the last time I saved was back in the other town, but I haven't done anything, so I mean, I guess it wouldn't be much of a loss. But, um, yeah, why not? Let's go ahead and steal the town treasure. Because you know what? I'm the goddamn hero of this story, and I deserve it. So, let's steal. You found a cloth sack. I will check the traps. Albert. Ooh, gas! A faint hiss can be heard as noxious fumes fill the air. But ooh, we got a hundred gold each and ten gems. Nice. So we got a hundred gold each, which, um... Yeah, a hundred gold each. That means... Yeah, a hundred gold each. That that actually means we we got six hundred gold. Six hundred gold. I'll take it. Oh crap. Oh crap. There's a barrier. Th there's like a... Oh, oh, thank... Oh, uh-oh! Town guards, you're under arrest! Halt! 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 <laughs> so, okay. Uh, we can either attack them, or bribe them, or run, or surrender. Oh god. 
it really is like I feel like I'm I'm back in Daggerfall or Morrowind um uh oh man do we want to run I don't know can we run faster than the town guards I don't know probably not um we could surrender and I guess they'd take me to jail we could bribe them but then what would be the point because we we got all that gold right <laughs> yeah criminal scum uh, let's uh I don't know let's try to let's let's try to bribe them I guess or I guess if we surrendered they would arrest us so let's try to bribe them high court sentence years equal eight wait what high court sentence years equal eight um oh 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 that's real bad that's real fucking bad so 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 okay what just happened uh the bribe failed and we just spent eight years in prison okay like the whole party just spent eight years in fucking prison because if you look at their ages they're supposed to be like 28 they're, they're supposed to be like 21 and, and uh you know and all that like 20 and 21 they're 28 and 29 now so we just spent eight years in prison now this is a bad thing because remember okay remember that at a certain point characters can they can they can die characters can can die of old age so we just lost like we lost like eight levels worth of of, uh, of age that's a real harsh sentence like that is a that is a fucking insane sentence right there um so yeah yeah we just spent eight years in prison stairs going down no I will not take them but I still haven't found like I still haven't found the the wizard so look I'm gonna keep looking for this damn wizard okay I, I don't care uh, we're finding this wizard okay so let's have Albert unlock the door. Success! Hmm. Okay, let's check this one. Unlock with Albert. Unlock failed! Hmm, nothing in there. Okay, so I've checked all the little houses on the left side. So now let's check these. Success! Oh god! A locust plague, snakes, and kobolds. Um, surrender? You know, at this point, I think we should just die because, look, we spent eight years in prison, okay? Like, we, we spent eight years in jail. I think maybe, maybe let's undo all of that. So let's uh, surrender. I surrender to the swarm of killer insects. Monsters don't take prisoners. I love that. And they get to attack first, so... Yeah, I'm just going to, uh... Have everyone do nothing, and we're just gonna take our punishment. Alright? Like, we're just gonna take the punishment, because... This was not good. This did not go down well. Alright? Like, this, this whole encounter... I'm not feeling it, so... I'm just gonna, like, super speed through the encounter. And just, yeah, watch everyone die. Alright, there we go. Shadow of Death. Shadow of Death. So, I don't know, man. I think that's a good place to leave it for now. And we'll just go back to the inn next time. Uh, didn't really lose any serious progress. But, um, goddamn just actual goddamn I mean like I didn't even know that was a thing like I didn't know that being arrested and spending years in prison I didn't know that was a thing in this game I had no idea so when I went to steal the treasure I was like well, what's the worst could happen like maybe I have to run away from from a guard or something no they put your ass in prison that's uh damn Okay, uh, I think we're done here. 